I would like to welcome you all to the uh, student experience of students experience of instruction workshop. Uh, my name is Abdulazim. I'm a statistician with the planning and institutional research office here. And I'm going to turn it over before I continue with the presentation. I'll turn it over to my colleague Jody uh, for the land acknowledgement as some uh, housekeeping. Hi. Uh, so my name is Jovi. I am a support analyst for um, the state team at PEAR. Um, I work a little bit more closely with the actual administration of the reports rather than um, the statistical side, which is um, Abdulazim's expertise. So um, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are gathered today on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Now, a few housekeeping notes before we begin. Um, so the slides for this presentation will be available after the session, and um, only the presentation of this um, only the presentation part of this session will be recorded. Um, at everything else, so that's, that includes breakout room activities, discussions, and Q&A will not be recorded. So if you don't feel comfortable asking your questions while the presentation part of the session is still being in progress and still being recorded, please save your questions for after that, when we get into the unrecorded Q&A part of the session. And now, uh, back to Abdulzi. Uh, thank you, Jovi. Um, again, um, welcome you all to, to this workshop. Um, and I'll try to keep my part of the presentation under half an hour uh, to allow enough time for a uh, short activity and also for question and answer. Um, I'm joined by my colleagues uh, Jovi, who just uh, did the introduction, uh, Alison, Kizitash, and Gavin. And they will be uh, with you in the breakout rooms uh, for the activity at the, after the presentation. The next slide, please. Um, this is an outline of what we hope to cover today. Uh, we will talk about the type of data uh, that we collect in the student experience of instruction surveys. And what does that mean in terms of what we could do with the data? Uh, we will look at the measures that we compute from the data. Uh, in particular, we will look at the three statistics that are in the instructor report. And finally, we will look at uh, ways that in which we can use those statistics, uh, combine them to meaningfully interrogate and understand the, 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 the scores, uh, students' scores. Uh, there will be uh, a group activity, will be, uh, uh, will be assigned to breakout rooms and joined by us uh, to go through the activity. And then we'll have a discussion uh, and question and answer at the end. The next slide, please. Uh, so by the end of this session, uh, we hope to have a better understanding of the new metrics. Uh, that's the instructor report. And also be able to use simple graphics to examine the relationship between the reported statistics uh, for a better uh, interrogation of the data. Next slide, please. Uh, in 2018, uh, UBC started a transition to this new metrics. Uh, during the transition, both the old metrics, which included the mean and the standard deviation, were reported uh, along with the new metrics. And in 2019, 2020, uh, UBC made a full switch to the, to the new metrics that, uh, that we have now. In 2021, changes were made to the six university module items, the UMI questions, and the new and modified questions were implemented in the winter of 2021, term one. Term one. Uh, but these changes uh, to the questions are beyond the scope of this workshop, uh, as we will be focused uh, exclusively on the statistics in the instructor report. Next slide, please. So the student experience of instruction data is categorical in nature, um, meaning that the student responses are captured in categories. So for the UMI questions, for example, we have five categories ranging from strongly agree to strongly disagree. However, these categories have some sense of order which make the data ordinal in nature. So it's an ordinal data. Uh, and we see that 
for example, strongly agree is a higher or better response than agree for, for a given question, which is higher than neutral and so on. Uh, the UMI question, the university item module, university module items, uh, as well as men, most of the faculty and department questions use a five point scale, but some faculty questions use a seven point scale. So a bit more on the scales in the next slide, please. So uh, in the five point scale, we have, I mean, both scales have an odd number of responses, you know, response categories, and they are balanced around a neutral response. So in the case of the five point scale, we have two responses, uh, strongly disagree and disagree, which are represented by the numerical values of one and two. Uh, these are below neutral, they are considered unfavorable responses. Agree and strongly agree are higher than neutral and they're considered favorable. In the seven point scale, we have three responses um, on both sides of the neutral. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, we will take a look at uh, the uh, instructor, uh, sample instructor report, just to see what, what's reported. And then we will continue talking about the information in the, in the report. So uh, uh, many of you are familiar with the uh, with, with with this report, which the instructor received at the end of the term. Uh, at the top of the report, we have a description of the section and the instructor information. Uh, this is just a test uh, report, uh, and then you have the number of students that were invited to the survey. In this case, we have two in this test one, and the number of uh, who responded to the survey. So we have two responses for a hundred percent response rate. Uh, because blue uh, uh, or explorance blue uh, doesn't have the capability to highlight or flag uh, surveys that did not meet the recommended minimum response rate, uh, we have this table at the top of the report where the instructor can look it up uh, depending on the number of students uh, and the, res the responses. Uh, so the, the the class side, the number of students that were invited, um, then they can. Uh, compare their response rate to the to the rec recommended minimum uh, to see if their survey met the minimum res uh, recommended response. Um, so, um, so that's that's the first part of the of the survey. In the second part, next slide, please. Uh, we see the universal uh, university module item, the six UMI questions, and we have a breakdown. So the uppercase N is the number of students invited, the lowercase is the number of students who responded, and then we have a breakdown of the responses by the five categories, from strongly disagree to strongly agree, and then we have the NA, which is not applicable, and in this case, it doesn't apply to the UMI question. Um, then we have the interpolated median, uh, indicated by, the abbreviated by as IM, the dispersion index, abbreviated as DI, and then below that, we have the same questions repeated with the percent favorable uh, indicated. Uh, uh, and I'll talk about those, uh, those measures uh, in more detail. Next slide, please. So uh, starting uh, with the percent favorable that we saw in the last slide, uh, the favorable responses are for any odd number uh, scale. Uh, the favorable responses are those that are higher than neutral. So in the five, in the case of the five point scale, uh, we have agree and strongly agree, which are higher than neutral. So those are considered favorable responses. In the seven point scale, we have three uh, favorable and three unfavorable responses around the uh, 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 neutral response. And uh, so percent favorable uh, is, Uh, is the proportion of responses that are higher than neutral expressed as, as a percentage of the total received responses. It is a very simple measure, uh, very intuitive, and but quite informative, and it's easy to calculate. So for example, if 20 students uh, completed the sur uh, survey and 16 out of the 20 students responded with agree or stronger agree to a specific question, then for that question, the percent favorable will be 16 out of 20 or eight out of 10, which is 
Uh, I think it is uh, worth noting that uh, in the student experience of instruction surveys, a student by and large tend to read their instruct, instru experience of instruction favorably, more often than not. And for example, at UBC overall, greater than 75, 75 to 80% of the student responses overall were favorable. Next slide, please. Um, the dispersion index that we report is a measure of data spread. So it tells us how spread the responses are in those categories. The value of the dispersion index ranges from zero to one. Uh, a value of zero is obtained when all respondents agree on a response. So they all give the same rating to their experience of instruction. Uh, on the other hand, a value of one, which is the maximum possible dispersion value, uh, is obtained when the students uh, or the respondents are split evenly between the two extremes. So half of them responded to strongly agree, and the other half is strongly disagree. Uh, uh, as in the five point scale, that will uh, result in, uh, in a dispersion index of one. Uh, again, I think it is important to note that uh, dispersion index rarely exceeds 0. 0.8. And when it does, it's usually associated with small sections where the surveys uh, did not, or the survey did not meet the recommended uh, minimum response rate. Next slide, please. So these are actually examples of the dispersion index. So we look at, uh, we, we look at the first, uh, we just focus on the first one. Uh, if we look at the first example, we have 60 total responses. This is the column that says count. Second column, if you can highlight it, uh, easy dash, you can point to it. The count uh, column, second column. Yeah, so we have 40 responses of agree, 20 uh, of, strongly, uh, of strongly agree, for a total of 60 responses. So we see that the majority of the responses are in one category, which is agree for that specific question. And the remaining responses are in the next uh, category. So they're not far off from, the, uh, from, the, from that category. And don't worry about the calculation, but this results at the far right uh, in a dispersion index of 0.22. So that's a low, uh, low dispersion uh, index. Uh, if we look at the second example, we have a total of 100 responses. So if we look at the count, and we see that the 100 are spread uh, throughout the five categories, starting from 22 for the strongly disagree, down to 27 on the column of the count, and all the way down to 17, which are strongly agree. So we see that the student responses are um, uh, spread uh, throughout the categories. And this results in a high dispersion of almost 0.8. And if we look uh, next, if you can look, uh, yeah. and then we have the last example, and this is the theoretical maximum. It, I never seen it happen, but this is the theoretical maximum response. We have uh, 60 responses, and they were split evenly between 30 of them strongly disagree, and 30 that are strongly agree, um, agreeing with the statement of the question. And this results in the maximum possible dispersion of one uh, of one. So this is, a, don't worry about how it's calculated. This is just a, to show the, the range of the, of the dispersion index and how that relates to the distribution of the responses. Next slide, please. So um, before I get into the interpolated median, which is the last statistic I'm going to talk about, uh, I just want to talk about distribution of scores and the median. Uh, and these are two examples. Um, two small sections. Uh, in, with, in, in example A, we have uh, 12 uh, responses. So the first, uh, if you look at the example A, the first response, we have 12 responses. One of the responses is uh, disagree with a numerical value of two. There are uh, six responses with the neutral, if you can highlight the example A. There are six of them that are uh, neutral, a numerical value of three. There are four that are agree with the uh, uh, numerical value of four and one strongly agree with the value of five. So what we see here is that the median, which is the 50th percentile, um, or as one of my colleagues called it, the number in the middle is three, which is the average of those two threes, because we do have an even 
number of responses. So the median is three. And if we look at the distribution of the responses, we see that we have one response, which is the red, that value of two, which is lower than the value of the median. We have five responses, which are greater than the median. These are the four and the five. And we have six responses that are equal to the median. These are the six threes. If we look at the second example, which is a section with uh, 15 responses, we see that we have three students responded with strongly disagree, numerical value of one. One student responded with uh, disagree, that's a numerical value of two. We have uh, nine uh, responses of, uh, of agree, which is the value of four. And we have two responses which strongly agree, which is a value of five. Again, when you look at the distribution, we see that four of those responses are below the value of the, the median. They are in red. Uh, two are greater than the median value, which is the two fives. And nine responses are equal to the median. So I want you, as we proceed, please keep those two examples in mind, those two distributions, and we will use them to demonstrate the uh, computation of the interpolated median and have a better understanding of what the interpolated median represents. And next slide, please. So I want you to recall the two uh, examples that we saw in the last slide. Uh, uh, example A, uh, the median was three. And we have one response, we call it uh, N minus. That's one response which is below the value of the median. We have five that are above the value of the median. The interpolated median, if you look at the formula at the top, the interpolated median is simply the median M, the, the customary median M, and it's adjusted by that amount to the right. So it's plus that amount, that amount could be positive or negative, and will adjust the median uh, upwards or downwards, depending on the distribution. So in this case here, we have, in, in example A, we have more responses that are higher than the value of the median of three, compared to only one response that's lower than the median, and the interpolated median of 3.3. .3. So the median was adjusted or interpolated upwards by three tenths of a point, resulting in interpolated median of 3.3. .3. In the uh, second example B, we have four responses that are below the median, two responses that are higher than the median, as we saw before, and we have a large number of the responses that are actually equal to the median, which is four. Because we have more responses to the left of the median, of the value of four, it's smaller than the value of four. The interpolate, the, the median is adjusted downwards, but not by much in this case, only by one tenth of a point, and we have an interpolated median of 3.9. Okay. So, uh, so this is actually just a quick um, uh, introduction, just to show that how the interpolated median relate to the distribution of the scores. Next slide, please. So again, this is actually, the, these are still the two examples, A and B. Uh, this is just a histogram. We have the, just we, we can see it in, in, in picture. And we can see that the two distributions are markedly different. They both have the same mean. If we look at the values of red down, they both have the same mean of 3.4. So the mean is 3.4 for both of them. The percent favorable, we, uh, which is the percentage of the favorable responses. In example A, we have four agree and one strongly agree. So there is five out of 12, and that's 42%. In example B, we have nine responses of agree, nine fours, and two responses of strongly agree, category five. And that, that uh, gives us 11 responses out of 15, which is 73%. And we see that the interpolated median, which we saw in the last slide of 3.3 .3 and 3.9 is kind of related uh, to the percent favorable. It reflects the uh, increase in the percent favorable for example, in example B, uh, even though the average or the mean uh, is the same. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, Given that the students tend to rate their experience of instruction favorably more often than not, uh, and this is actually in the literature, 
the interpolated median uh, is preferred, and that's why UVC uh, started to use it, uh, because it better reflects the distribution of the scores, the student responses, better than the mean or the median. Uh, it is also closely associated with the percent favorable. And by closely associated, I don't mean that it, uh, it, it's just a high statistical correlation. There is actually a, an interesting relationship between the interpolated median and the percent favorable, which is a subject of a draft uh, uh, of the manuscript that's actually uh, uh, going to, uh, to print soon. Uh, working with one of my colleagues uh, on it. Um, it has been submitted for publication. Um, and this relationship actually in, underpin the, the whole idea behind using this, uh, uh, this, uh, this new metrics. So if we uh, look at the next slide, we actually see the, this is a simple scatter plot of the interpolated of the percent favorable on the y-axis and the interpolated median on the x-axis. Each point represents um, the interpolated median and percent favorable from an instructor report. So each point here is actually uh, an instructor uh, represent uh, the values from an instructor. So you can think of each point as a instructor. This is from 2020 term one, winter term one, and this is UMI question number five. So what we see here is that um, at a glance, we can see that the, the vertical line and the horizontal line uh, were added just for, em just to, uh, for emphasis so we can see the, the picture better. Um, if we look at this relationship, we see that for an interpolated median that's less than 3.5, there is no percent favorable exceeding 50%. Sorry about that. And for an interpolated median greater than 3.5, there is no percent, there is no percent favorable uh, below 50%. So basically the data, um, uh, when we plot those two statistics, the data is now limited to the upper right quadrant and the bottom uh, left quadrant. And there will be no data in the upper left or the bottom uh, right quadrant. Uh, the other thing that we note about this relationship is that it actually goes through a pivot point, and that pivot point is at an interpolated median value of 3.5 and a percent favorable of 50%. Also, the relationship uh, in the vicinity of that uh, pivot point is fairly linear. And you can see uh, some spread of the data as you go away from that, uh, from that uh, vicinity of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, pivot point. Um, in this particular case, we have 96% of the responses uh, for that particular question, 95, 96% uh, of the instructor um, were in that upper quadrant and only 4%. Uh, by and large, for most questions, the upper quadrant have about 90 to 95%, uh, above 90% for most cases. Uh, of the of the instructor reports will be in the upper quadrant, and about five to ten percent will be in the lower uh, in the lower quadrant. Uh, I'll talk more about this in the next example. Um, this is actually uh, just a quick. Uh, this is the same relationship, the same scatter plot of the percent favorable and interpolated median, but for a seven point scale. Everything that I said on the five-point scale holds here, same uh, in terms of the relationship between the two statistics. Uh, the only difference is that on the x-axis, we see that the uh, vertical line shift to 4.5. And so our pivot point for a point seven-point scale is at 4.5 and 50%. Uh, everything else uh, holds uh, just like in the five-point scale. So the next example, uh, uh, we will get into more details. So this is actually uh, uh, an example from one academic unit. So this is all the instructors in that academic unit. Again, this is the interpolated median and percent favorable for one question. And we see that the data, as we saw before, is only in the upper right and the lower bottom 
quadrant. There is no data in the other two quadrants. So the data, we can see that at a glance, it splits between those two categories. Those who have an interpolated median of greater than 3.5, those are uh, with a percent favorable of greater than or equal to 50%. And those with an interpolated median of three of less than 3.5 with a percent favorable, not exceeding 50%. Um, again, to highlight how those, uh, how we interpret uh, this information, um, we're going to look at the highlighted point in the upper quadrant. So the red dot in the center of that is actually the aggregate point for that academic unit. So this is the overall statistics in interpolated median of 4.2, and you can see the data on the right, uh, on the left of your screen. So the academic unit has an, uh, an, uh, an aggregated value for the interpolated median of 4.2 with about 76% favorable and a moderate dispersion of 0.5. So we are now going to take a look at foreign structures uh, in this unit. They labeled A, B, C, and D. If we look at an structure A, and again, the values are written, uh, the values are the left, we see that this instructor have an interpolated median of 3.9, which is slightly lower than the aggregate, but a percent favorable of 80%, which is about four percentage points higher than the aggregate, um, and uh, a, a relatively lower dispersion of 0.35. Okay, the picture will get more clearer when we look at the other instructor. If we look at instructor C, uh, instructor C has a an interpolated median of 4.3. Again, you see the values on the left, uh, 4.3 and 100% favorable rate. So the interpolated median is quite comparable to the aggregate for that unit, but the percent favorable is uh, a perfect 100%. And the, the reason that this particular instructor has 100% favorable rating with, um, uh, an interpolated median comparable to the aggregate is because of the low dispersion. They have a low dispersion of 0.24. And if we look at instructors B and D, sorry, if we look at instructor B at the bottom, uh, instructor B has a, uh, an interpolated median of 4.6, which is would be by many measure considered to be high. Um, but they have a percent favorable of 73%, which means that one out of four respondents did not read their experience of instruction favorable. The dispersion index is point, almost close to 0 0.6, 0 0.57 for this instructor. If we look at instructor D, we see that the interpolated median is comparable to B, which is about 4.5. So they, they are both almost on the same vertical line, having similar values of the interpolated median. But instructor D has a 100% favorable rating. All the students in the, in the uh, all respondents in that section rated their experience of instruction favorable with the scores of uh, responses of four or five. And, uh, and the difference between instructor D and B could be seen in the value of the dispersion index. So an instructor D has a low dispersion of 0.25, as opposed to an instructor B with a dispersion of 0.57. So in the upper quadrant, as we go down from an instructor D down to B, we see that as the dispersion increases for a given value of inter the interpolated median, as dispersion increases, percent favorable decreases. Now in the lower quadrant, the uh, relationship is actually the opposite. If we look at, for example, an interpolated median of three and we go up, we see that three, interpolated median of three, that's two, yes. Uh, and if we go up, we see that the percent favorable ranges from about 30% to just over 40%. In this up lower quadrant, the higher the dispersion, the higher will be the percent favorable. It's just the opposite of the relationship in the upper uh, in the upper quadrant. So this is kind of a, uh, just a quick example to show us how we can use those three statistics, and especially in a graphical form, to uh, to have a better, maybe uh, more meaningful 
interrogation of the data um, as opposite to in the past where people were relying on a single statistic, which is the mean, and they just compare the instructor mean to that of the, an academic unit, for example. So this is a, a, a more holistic approach in the sense that we look at all three statistics and we can see that graphically or in a tabular form and allows us to uh, have a, a better meaningful interrogation of the data. I think this brings me to the end of my presentation.